Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the news section. In this section, we are going to explore a whole lot of data type, but first we're going to start with reading a little bit of documentation and talking about memory management. We obviously need to talk about the pointers, but before we go into the pointer section, it is important that we talk about memory because that's what the pointers actually do. So let's talk about how we can have that and we are going to discuss a little bit on the documentation as well. Let's get started. So. Memory management uh, is really simple in the Golang, unlike other couple of languages which in which you have to do the memory management on your own. In the Golang, it is not your job and thank goodness it is not. Memory allocation and deallocation automatically happens in the Golang and I will discuss this line or elaborate this line a little bit more, but I don't want to just say it out loud, I want to read it directly from the documentation. So we're gonna talk about that. And in the memory management, we are usually going to use these two methods and uh, we create or allocate memory based on them and they are pretty common to be used in the case of maps and arrays and all of that so don't you worry we will have practical demonstration on them so don't you worry on that there are a couple of differences on them and similarities of course they are there but differences are something that we need to talk about so when you use the keyword new and inside this new parenthesis you actually create uh, this is basically a method both of them which helps you to allocate some memory and then in in that memory you can put up some data structure like uh, an array maybe a variable maybe a slice or something else so both are used for that new is also used for that and make is also used for that in majority of the cases you'll be using make and when you use the keyword new a memory is being allocated uh, but it is not initialized and yes there are of course use cases of that but in the majority of the cases you won't be using that but when you use the keyword make, a memory is allocated and is initialized also on your behalf so that you can use that memory and put any value into that. In both of the cases, you of course are going to get a memory address and you can reference them using the pointers and stuff like that. Now just for the interview perspective, uh, always remember that new actually gives you the zeroed storage and make actually gives you the non-zeroed storage. The zero storage in which you cannot actually put any data uh, initially, but in the non-zeroed storage, you can actually go ahead and put any of the data. So just remember that it's not going to be too much uh, useful while writing the code, but knowing that is important and probably there might be some cases of that. Okay. Now, a couple of interesting thing about memory management, the GC or the garbage collection happens automatically. Anything which is out of the scope or becomes nil is eligible for the garbage collection, but it's not like it's going to happen. There are some certain requirement that needs to be met. There are some certain threshold values about the memory that needs to be uh, overwritten and then only that can happen. But I'm gonna ex explain that in a little bit. But before that, let me move it ahead a little bit sidebar. In the Golang, the GC was a talk about a lot of uh, kind of criticism in the initial days, but the moment the goal rolled out, their developers realized it and they eventually rewrote the entire GC, the garbage collector, and the performance went sky roof onto the sky roof after that. So let me explore that a little bit. So don't you worry about the GC, the garbage collector. It is being entirely rewritten and it is much, much amazing now. So let me go ahead and open this link, which is uh, pkg.dev runtime. And runtime is a package in itself. Uh, maybe you want to get some low level information about how much of the CPU is available and all those kinds of stuff. That is all through the runtime. You won't be using it much in this course, but just wanted to give you idea that this is there. Couple of interesting uh, lines that I would like to read in front of you so that you know about it, especially the second paragraph here. The Go GC, which is again garbage collector variable, sets the initial garbage collection target percentage. So this is the variable, just like we have Go OS. This is the variable which sets the initial percentage for the garbage collection. A collection is triggered when the ratio of freshly allocated data to live data remain above after the uh, previous collection reaches its percentage. So basically it's saying there is a threshold value. You, can, you are allowed to set that value and the garbage collection happens after uh, that value. So that's basically it. And you can also go ahead and change this value. Usually you won't be doing it, but in case you are into that much of low level of programming, you are allowed to do so. 
And a couple of interesting things in the functions, I won't be talking about all of them, definitely it's out of the scope, but just wanted to give you idea that there are so many of these methods that you can directly use and can inquire about the resources that are available to you or you can change the resources as well. For example, uh, the most easiest one is numCPU. So you want to find out how many number of CPUs are there, uh, the current process that is using. So you can go ahead and actually use that. It returns you an integer and based on that, you can actually take some of the steps on that. So this is the basics of it. In case you want to go ahead and want more details on it, you can go ahead and read this. But that's all what we'll be talking from the theoretical perspective of the memory management. Now next, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about the pointers. They are super easy and very easy to manage, especially in the Golang. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.